Physics caps, check. Beverage, check. Let's get ready for day two. Day two was the day that we actually headed to CERN. But I needed fuel and we had a continental buffet awaiting us in the morning. And then we went for a quick walk in the Swiss countryside. And then we were outside CERN. Well, almost. We had to wait for the rest of the crew, but while we were waiting, we discovered this. Do you want to explain to us what exactly what it is? It's a vending machine. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. It's a vending machine. A very cool vending machine. Oh, do I fancy some... Do I fancy some kake fret? No, I don't. I want a twix. <laughs> and then we were outside CERN. And then we were inside CERN. Now, inside CERN, they had a really colourful floor and apparently it keeps track of cosmic rays as they break through the Earth's atmosphere and scatter everywhere as secondary particles. But that was just a taste of the awesome ahead of us. Firstly, we had lunch in CERN's very snazzy canteen, which had, I believe, one of the dipoles used in one of the previous colliders. They served me some lovely pasta, and then I discovered that all trays do go to heaven. Oh. Then our tour began with Sarah, a DPhil student from Oxford currently working at CERN, who shared her physics knowledge with us all about what's going on at the moment at CERN. And then we had another talk all about the experiments being done at the moment at CERN by this chap. Now this guy is called Mark and he walked us through the extensive checks that each dipole had to go through before it could be given the thumbs up and used. Now this thing here is a section of the dipole used in these colliders and it's just a wondrous piece of engineering. Now in the collider there are dipoles such as this which are used to bend the particles and quadrupoles which focus the beams. Unfortunately I didn't get a picture of the quadrupoles so just imagine magnets like that, like perpendicular. Quadrupole. This is a quadrupole. So in this pipe they have protons going one way and in the other protons going in the opposite direction and then these are propelled by magnets. The magnets used are superconducting magnets, i.e. there is no resistance. To do this they chill the magnets down to 1.9 degrees Kelvin or minus 271.1 degrees Celsius. They do this by using liquid helium. Not only this, but inside the dipole, there's a vacuum more vacuous than space itself. And when these particles collide, they give out an amount of energy that is 100,000 times that of the center of the sun, which is a freaking huge amount of energy. Before the excitement got too much, we were then relocated to CMS, which is the experiment hunting for the elusive Higgs particle. On the way to CMS, we passed some more real-life physicists who had a vast number of computers capturing everything that was going on in CMS. Then we needed to wear some safety helmets and go here. Yes, we were going down there. And while we were going down the lift, we were given a fire safety chat by Michael and Francesco, the two really cool physicists giving us the tour. Not that much fire can melt steel. When we arrived at the bottom, we were tons of servers being used to process the huge amounts of data the CMS detectors were collecting from the 40 million particles being smashed together per second. Per second. There's also this amazing sign. This cupboard is guarded by a crazy lion who's just been told his wife is having an affair with a leopard and he's got a gun. Please keep out. We asked them what was in this cupboard that was so important. Turns out it was one of the physicist's lunches. Don't eat my lunch. Then we moved on to the entrance of the collider, which we weren't allowed to pass through, not because we weren't people of CERN, but because we would have died from radiation if we had. To prevent randomers from getting in, they had pretty intensive security. Firstly, you have to swipe your CERN card. Then, the CCTV camera looks to see if you are who you say you are. Then, a key is dispensed, which you insert into the lock and turn. Then, the first door to the entrance opens. You then enter and stand on a weighing scale, and it checks to see if your weight matches the one that they have on their database. And then, you have your irises scanned, and after all of that, you're allowed in! Easy! Another safety measure they have is a helium alarm in case there's a leak in the CMS of the liquid helium. Which will pretty instantly turn to gas and kill you because you'll have no oxygen, and that means that you die. And that was the end of the trip to CMS. If you would like to know more about the physics at CERN, I've added links in the info part of the video for you guys to click. Right, so that's everything. Goodbye. And that was the end of the trip to the sea. Oh gosh, I broke everything. And that was the end of- Ow! Okay, I'm not doing the spin.